Hello, my name is Sydney and I'll be starting medical school in a week. You guys have been there through every step of my application cycle, but in today's, today's video, I'm going to recap it all and share how I got accepted into medical school. Before we begin, I do want to say that my application is very personal to me and stands as a culmination of trying my absolute best. I'm not the perfect applicant, but I'm making this video to help those who've asked, so please be mindful. Stats can oftentimes be a sensitive topic. Some have asked to get a reference, but I'd just like to reiterate, stats are one part of your application. There are so many areas on the application where you can shine and showcase your passion for medicine. Also know that if you're trying your best, You'll be where you're not only meant to be, but also where you're meant to thrive and be the best student doctor for your future patients. Timestamps of each section will be in the description, and I'll also be heavily referencing previous videos if you wanted more information on certain parts of the application. Without further ado, let's begin. For context, I graduated UCLA as a biology major in 2018. I applied during the 2019-2020 cycle, so that means I took two gap years before medical school. I've highly emphasized reframing gap years as time to build yourself up as an applicant if you choose to take them before applying. I talk about what I did in my gap years here. I chose to take two gap years to retake my MCAT, but honestly, that was the time I needed to learn how to take care of myself. I struggled a lot with negative emotions and coping in college, but I'm in a much, much better mind state now, which is crucial to endure the rigors of medical school. I did not complete the disadvantage section on my AMCAS application. I received help from the AAMC's free assistance program, which helped me feel more comfortable applying to so many schools. In total, I applied to 34 allopathic schools. I did not complete any military service. I'm Vietnamese American. My parents immigrated to the US in the 70s and they both graduated from college. I'm from Southern California. I grew up in a single parent household and I have one older brother and if all goes well, fingers crossed, I'll be the first doctor in our family. As a personal side, I stressed myself out a lot with grades. I didn't know how to work efficiently, didn't invest in many friendships or support systems, and unfortunately placed a lot of my self-worth on how I performed in classes. I'm mentioning this since I've had a lot of people reach out to me expressing these same feelings too. I just want to remind you that even if you feel like you can't recover from your early performance, from this moment on, you can change your study habits, seek help, and try to do as well as you can. Upward trend shows promise. But also, please, please, please take care of yourself in mind, body, and spirit. I definitely had to learn this the hard way. Early in college, I had a couple of B pluses, Bs, and B minuses, one C, and the rest of my grades range from A minuses to A pluses starting my junior year through my senior year. My verified GPAs for each year were as follows. For cumulative GPA, trying my absolute best, my BCPM was a 3.74, my AO or all other was a 3.94, which brings my overall GPA to a 3.79. I took the MCAT three times. <laughs> I voided my first attempt and have the later two scores on record. I took my second attempt in January 2018 and scored a 510 with this breakdown. 127, 126, 128, and 129. I took my last attempt one year later in January 2019 and I scored a 517 with this breakdown. 129, 130, 129, 129. I have four videos dedicated to the MCAT, specifically how I studied, how I approach each section of the MCAT, how I reviewed my practice exams, and what I mentally changed to improve my scores. I've linked those videos in the description. I completed all 15 entry spaces for my work and activities. My emphasis was on community service, specifically working with the underserved and Vietnamese communities. My three most meaningful involvements were being a health fair coordinator for one of my college orgs called Vietnamese Community Health, writing to my patient pen pal in an art for recovery program, and volunteering in the community as a pageant representative for Miss Vietnam San Diego. If you wanted to know more about these and my other work and activities more in Depth, I talk about them in my work and activities video. And if you were trying to start your work and activities section, I have a video on writing tips to strengthen your entries as well as my writing strategy in the description. 
As for the personal comment section or the personal statement, I chose to emphasize my pull to community medicine and incorporated imagery and stories about my grandma, my experience as a bilingual registered behavior technician, a meaningful hospital discharge, my patient pen pal friendship, and my work as a health fair coordinator for Vietnamese Community Health. I read my personal statement here and I've listed two videos on how you can start writing yours. One is writing tips on how you can get started and the other is a walkthrough on how I applied those tips to writing my personal statement. I asked for seven letters of recommendations and stored all of them on Interfolio. For academic letters, I didn't have the strongest relationships with my professors, but your girl still got the letters. For science, I had an ecology professor from a lower div class and another ecology professor from an upper div class. For non-science, not recommended, but I had a TA from a Vietnamese language course that I took since my professor didn't respond to me. <laughs> Even my TA expressed hesitance about writing a letter, but from probably hearing how much I needed this letter, she agreed to help me. For non-academic letters, I had a doctor I shadowed, a doctor I worked with from a free clinic, a Vietnamese pageant director and the director of the patient pen pal program that I was a part of. And this is just an aside, but another benefit of gap years is building relationships and working with people who not only teach you a lot, but are also so willing to advocate for you. All of my non-academic letters came from my gap year experiences. For each letter writer, I tried to make their job easier by assembling by assembling, by assembling a personalized letter packet with my experiences, characteristics I believed I embodied that helped me in medical school and in the future as a physician, and the specific work I did with this person. I made a video on how to ask for strong letter recommendations here, which includes the letter packet templates in its description. I applied to 34 schools and talk about how I made my school list in this video. I tried to have a balanced ratio of target, safety, and reach schools. I heavily considered these factors. Location, so places I could picture myself living in, but more importantly, trying to stay in state for that in-state tuition. Stats, so whether I fell into that school's MCAT or GPA range, which I referenced through MSAR. And program emphasis, I wanted to find schools with a strong community medicine focus, which I tried to tell by reading school's mission statement, looking into dual degree programs offered, and seeing if they had a free clinic associated with the medical school. Some next level considerations were if the school was changing its curriculum, which for example could be are the didactic years condensed or accelerated, are clinical rotations integrated earlier in the curriculum, and what is the step timing, which is another change to consider now since step one is now pass fail. Second, are in-person lectures mandatory and are those lectures even recorded? But in in COVID times. <laughs> In-person lectures are most likely not mandatory and lectures will be recorded. Lastly, what is the nature of examinations? Is it multiple choice, short answer, or free response? And how does that school grade? Is it pass-fail or is there a grading system? I completed all 34 secondaries and was bad to the bone for not pre-writing any. <laughs> but even with a full-time job, I personally felt like it wasn't that bad. I finished writing secondaries in a month and a half. I talk about the most common prompts I encountered here, how I approach writing secondaries here, and I even read snippets of some of my favorite secondaries here. I went to two out-of-state interviews and two in-state interviews. From these four, I received one waitlist decision and three acceptances. I just finished my interview series, so I highly recommend checking that out for background on the types of interviews you encounter, like traditional MMI and hybrid, how I prepared for interviews in terms of my routine and strategy, tips to crush your interview, and what to wear, but not told by Jake from State Farm. And for some miscellaneous tidbits, there is so much uncertainty at lace with the 2020-2021 cycle, and I'm so sorry for that, guys. But hopefully, with the AMC's accommodations, everything will work out okay. But in general, not gonna lie, I wasn't too familiar with the AMCA's application timeline or deadlines before my cycle. If you wanted a reference, I explained the timeline and included my example in this video. But in short, I submitted my primary application on June 12th, 2019. I received my first secondary June 29th, which was especially peculiar because I didn't get verified until July 2nd. I submitted my last letter of recommendation July 12th, took the CASPER exam July 18th, received my first interview invite August 15th, 
received my first rejection August 28th, went to my first interview October 7th, got admitted to my first school November 7th, and completed my last interview December 12th. I stayed organized applying to medical school and using my Master of Medical School Excel. I made my application list, kept track of primary and secondary site information, letters of recommendations, secondary prompts, and interview information using this Excel. I've linked it below as a reference as well as the video I take you guys on a tour of it. In terms of money, applying to medical school is crazy expensive. I talked about some programs available to help mitigate those costs and other general tips on how to save money throughout the pre-med process in this video. If you were curious, about my totals, I also talk about them in this video. So that is how my application cycle went last year. I'm all self promoted out, but I hope you guys found this helpful going into your cycle. If you did, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and drop it like it's hot, and by it, I mean a comment below. <laughs> this is officially my last video for my medical school application playlist. Thank you guys for sticking with me and letting me be a part of your journeys. It makes me so happy reading your guys' comments and your messages on Instagram. So please don't leave me hanging on those updates. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and for being here. I can't wait to see you next time. All right, bye.